Caregiving can sometimes feel like an impossible struggle. Caregivers may be torn between taking care of loved ones and trying to maintain balance in life. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson is here to focus on the conversation of caring. You're not alone. In fact, you're in exactly the right place to share stories and learn tips and resources to help you and your loved ones. So now, please welcome the host of The Caring Generation, Pamela D. Wilson. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. You're listening to the Caring Generation radio program coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. The Caring Generation focuses on conversations about health, well-being, caring for ourselves, and loved ones all tied together with a little humor and laughter that are essential to being a caregiver. The topic for the show is all about podcasts for caregivers by listener request. How to subscribe, download, listen, and show your family members how to do the same. I'll do a review of my caregiving radio program by sharing information about favorite episodes that you can share with your family. The Caring Generation podcast for caregivers do air as a live internet radio show. If you're listening live, show your family and friends how to join the show live every week. After the live radio show, the caregiving program becomes a podcast available on all of the major podcast sites. The caregiving program podcast is also on my website with the show transcript that you can read. Many podcasts for caregivers don't air on live radio stations, but they're recorded. More on all of this in a moment. Our guest for this live caregiving radio program is Dr. Mary George, who is a senior medical officer and associate director for science in the Division for Heart Disease and Stroke Prevention at the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, where she's worked since 2005. She is an expert in the area of stroke prevention with over 100 publications, articles, abstracts. She has a master's in public health from Emory University and is a fellow of the American College of Surgeons and a fellow of the American Heart Association. Plus, she is board certified in general surgery and plastic surgery. Amazing background. Strokes used to be considered an event that happened only to people over age 65. Today, people under the age of 40 are having strokes, which are called brain attacks. Do you wonder why? Dr. George will answer this information and we'll talk about stroke prevention, about the signs of stroke, the importance of getting medical treatment right away, and steps people who have had a stroke can take to recover, all in the next segment of this show. Let's return to our conversation about podcasts for caregivers. Here are the reasons that people like caregiving programs and podcasts so that you can use this information to invite your family and elderly parents to listen to the Caring Generation caregiving programs. Podcasts have a theme and a focus on a specific topic. For example, the Caring Generation podcasts are for caregivers and aging adults. This means family caregivers plus caregivers working in the healthcare system, in hospitals, nursing homes, care communities, doctor's offices, caregivers everywhere. The goal is to inform, educate, and entertain about health, caregiving, and family relationships. As you'll notice, when we begin to talk about these caregiving programs, many of the caregiving radio program topics come from you. They come from my discussions with caregivers and the questions that you share with me on social media, And in my caregiving group on Facebook, it's called The Caregiving Trap. Most caregivers don't realize that caregiving programs and support exists because, let's be honest, aging and caring for elderly parents, these are not sexy topics. Those of us who work with the elderly are often asked why on earth we do this as if we're crazy. For us, it's easy. We love the elderly, can't imagine doing anything else, but Big surprise, not everyone likes the elderly. The healthcare industry has gaps in caregiving programs and a shortage of providers who want to work with the elderly. 
My special guests on these caregiving programs are subject matter experts on medical, health, relationships, law, and planning for care. Another benefit of these caregiving programs is that the podcasts, meaning the live show replays, are on demand, which means you can listen at your convenience. If you have to stop in the middle of the caregiving program, turn it off, press a button, start and begin listening where you left off. You can download the caregiving programs to a smartphone, a computer, a tablet. A lot of people listen to podcasts for caregivers while commuting to work, cleaning the house, working out at the gym, taking a walk, caring for elderly parents, and doing other activities. A caregiving podcast is it's like listening to a talking book. Let's go through a few steps to listen to my podcast for caregivers, and then I'll share information about caregiving programs that answer questions frequently posed by caregivers. If you are a podcast listener, you may already have an app installed on your phone. If not, you will find the Caring Generation caregiving programs on Apple, in the Google Play Store, on Spreaker, Spotify, Stitcher, Pandora, CastBox, SoundCloud, and more. My podcasts for caregivers are also on my website at PamelaDWilson.com. Click on the media tab, scroll down forward to the caring generation. You can click on a show, click on the download button. It looks like a cloud with a down arrow. The show will download to the desktop of your computer or your parents' computer, and you can listen, or you can simply press the icon button that looks like a right arrow or a play button, and the caregiving program plays like magic. You can bookmark the caregiving radio program page on my website on the computer of an elderly parent or install a podcast app on their cell phone with the show. I know a lot of caregivers have trouble with some of this technology and our elderly parents have even more trouble. So the goal is to make it easy for you. These steps make it easy for an elderly parent or anybody who may not be tech savvy, to listen to new caregiving programs each week. If your parent likes to listen and read the caregiving program, the show transcript is on my website at PamelaDWilson.com. The podcasts for caregivers that we talk about on this show are the caregiving programs you have asked for. Let's start with why there's never enough money to care for elderly parents. That is on the show called Costs of Caring for Elderly Parents. Curious about what assisted living costs? The show called What is Assisted Living gives costs plus offers insights on working with referral agencies who might not give you the real story about how they get paid. These caregiving programs offer information to help you manage care for elderly parents, reduce caregiving stress, unexpected surprises, common mistakes. In the second half of the show, we'll talk about caregiving programs, some for working caregivers, some about family relationships. In addition to podcasts for caregivers on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, you'll find caregiver videos, caregiving webinars, information about family caregiving video conferences, programs, and live question and answer sessions. Up next, we are going to be talking to Dr. Mary George, From the CDC, she is an expert on the subject of strokes, stroke treatment, and prevention. Strokes used to be something that only happened with people over age 65. Now, people under the age of 40 are having strokes. Check out podcasts for caregivers on my website, PamelaDWilson.com. This is Pamela D. Wilson on The Caring Generation, live on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and 
and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. You're listening to the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. With us is Dr. Mary George. Dr. George, thank you for joining us. It's great to be here. Thank you. Stroke used to be considered an event that happened to people over age 65. People under the age of 40 are now having strokes. What is contributing to that change? So strokes can happen at any age. We tend to think that they only happen to people who are older, but they can happen to infants, children, young adults, and the very elderly. So we've seen increases in hospitalization rates for younger adults over about the past couple of decades um, and decreases in stroke rates among the elderly, which is good news. Um, But there have been, as many people have heard, Um, over the last two decades or so, increases in the prevalence of high blood pressure, diabetes, tobacco use, high blood cholesterol, and obesity among younger adults. And it's more common among younger adults who present to the hospital with a stroke than in the younger population in general. We can't say for sure that these what we call traditional risk factors Um, are the cause of strokes when we look at people that are hospitalized um, and we look at that hospitalization data. But we can see an association between those who are having these strokes and the increases in these common risk factors for stroke. Strokes in younger adults can occur for many reasons, and some of these reasons aren't very common. Um, Some of those conditions make it more likely for the blood to clot. Um, Some are thought to be related to trauma that causes damage to the inside wall of blood vessels that causes it to separate. And sometimes it's very difficult to determine the exact cause of stroke in younger adults. I read some of your research. So I know strokes are called brain attacks and that there are a couple types of strokes. Can you explain those? Sure. So there's three different main types of stroke. The most common is an ischemic stroke, and that accounts for about 87% of all strokes. And that's where there's a blockage that occurs in the artery, either in the brain or going to the brain. The other two types of strokes are what we call hemorrhagic strokes, where there's bleeding either in the brain or around the brain. One of those is when there's bleeding within the brain tissue. It's called an intracerebral hemorrhage. And that accounts for about 8 to 10% of strokes. And the other type of stroke is much less common um, when there's bleeding around the brain, such as what happens when an aneurysm ruptures. It's called a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Um, as I, these 
strokes that are due to an aneurysm account for about three to five percent of all strokes. Aneurysms are um, like a sac-like or pouch-like swelling on a blood vessel, and that becomes very fragile and it can rupture. All three types of strokes are associated with high blood pressure. There is a, uh, I guess it's a scale, it's called the FAST scale, F-A-S-T, and that is supposed to help people notice if somebody's having a stroke. Can you talk about that? Sure. Stroke symptoms typically occur suddenly. FAST, or F-A-S-T, is an easy way to remember some of the common symptoms that happen with a stroke. F stands for face. A stands for arm. S stands for speech, and T stands for time. If you see someone who suddenly develops a drooping face on one side or a weak arm or leg on one side or suddenly develops slurred speech or difficulty speaking, it's time to call 911. There's also... uh, A scale is very similar to FAST. It has two additional letters, so it's called B-FAST, where the B stands for having trouble with balance or coordination, and E stands for eyes, or suddenly having trouble seeing with one or both eyes. So either FAST or B-FAST. And can you, we're going to get ready to go out to a break, but let's start talking about what if somebody delays treatment? What if they don't get to the emergency room? Why is it so important? When a stroke occurs, a part of the brain is affected by the stroke. It can't get enough oxygen. And when that happens, brain cells die very quickly, just as the heart muscle is injured quickly when a heart attack occurs. Getting to the hospital quickly is important in order to get treatment to open the blocked blood vessel or to stop bleeding in the brain. It's why it's so important to call 911 if someone has experienced signs and symptoms of a stroke. The clot busting treatment that is used needs to be given within just a couple of hours after a stroke begins. And the sooner the treatment is given, the better the chances of a good recovery. Strokes can also be treated by using a device to remove the blood clot, but that also needs to be performed within a few hours after the stroke occurs. So the sooner treatment is provided, the better the chances of a good recovery. And let's say somebody doesn't does any hospital, can any hospital do these type of treatments or is it a special, are there special stroke hospitals? There are um, special stroke hospitals um, that provide different levels of treatment. Um, very large hospitals um, are, there's not a lot of them, but there's a number around the country that can provide the clot removal treatment. Okay, perfect. We will continue our conversation with Dr. Mary George after this break. I'm Pamela D. Wilson, your host for The Caring Generation, live on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veteran spoke-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. 
PBM Global Network. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at L'École des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Pamela D. Wilson, Caregiving Expert. I'm your host. You're listening to the Caring Generation radio program for caregivers and aging adults coming to you live from the BBM Global Network Channel 100 and Tune In Radio. Let's continue our conversation with Dr. Mary George from the CDC Division for Heart Disease and Stroke Prevention. So, Dr. George, can you talk about the after effects of a stroke? What happens after somebody has a stroke? Well, strokes can leave people with weakness or paralysis of an arm or a leg, um, loss of coordination, numbness and tingling sensations, trouble speaking, memory problems, pain, depression, difficulty walking or using your hands, or someone could even have a condition where they don't seem to be aware of one side of their body. And these symptoms really depend on what part of the brain was affected by the stroke how severe the stroke is, and how successful treatment is. That has to be life-altering for somebody who is in their 40s or 50s who has a stroke. How important is the, the rehab? So the physical, the speech, the occupational therapy, does that really help people recover? So stroke recovery starts very soon after having had a stroke. And the rehabilitation, as you mentioned, can involve physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy. The rehabilitation helps you to regain strength, coordination, speech, and other skills that were lost with the stroke. And that rehabilitation can go on for quite some time, but it's very important in the first few days and weeks and months after having had a stroke in terms of um, being able to have a better recovery. Is is depression common with strokes? I would imagine. I mean, if this happened to me, I think I would be I would be mortified, and I, I don't know that I could manage through it. Do people who have strokes do they become depressed? Um, they do, and um, that's an important part of the rehabilitation is evaluating someone for whether they are having depression and if they are getting treatment for that. And what about statistics? So for people who recover, is it better if you're over 65 to, is it easier for you to recover or is it easier to recover if you're younger? Well, according to an evidence review that was published um, a few years ago, 2013, I believe, younger and healthier stroke patients may continue to improve um, after having had a stroke for a longer period of time than very older people. Um, the younger people tend to have a better long-term survival rate, too. And is ongoing medical care, so if I have a stroke, would I need to see the doctor every three months or six months, or what would my, what would my doctor's care look like? So it would, you would probably be on some medications to um, treat high blood pressure or diabetes or cholesterol, um, in terms of how often you would need to see the doctor, it really depends on, on the individual's um, recovery process. And then do doctors then talk about, let's say I had a stroke and maybe I was smoking and my cholesterol sky high and I have high blood pressure. 
what kind of lifestyle recommendations do doctors make to help people not have that next stroke? So there's a number of things that are recommended. They say that up to 80% of strokes are preventable. And that's, that's really an amazing number of strokes that could be prevented. So prevention, whether you've had a stroke or whether you haven't had a stroke, it's important that you develop that healthy lifestyle, even from the time you're a child. Maintaining the healthy lifestyle throughout life means being physically active, maintaining a healthy weight, not smoking, eating a healthy diet with plenty of fruits and vegetables and whole grains, low in saturated fats, low in sodium, low in added sugars, and avoiding too much alcohol can help reduce your risk for stroke. And, and reduce this is- your risk for high, high blood pressure, or diabetes, high cholesterol, all of those things can be reduced, which can prevent the stroke. And this is a, a tough question to ask, but we, you know, we hear everything that you're saying, but yet for some reason, we as consumers don't pay attention. What, what can we do to convince people that this is important? Um, just promoting the messages of living what we call, we call it a heart healthy lifestyle, but it, it's important for your brain as well. Um, and so just promoting those messages of living a healthy lifestyle. And you mentioned the brain. So uh, this is from partly my experience. I've had a lot of clients who have had strokes who later years down the road maybe came down with memory problems or some type of cognitive issues. In your experience, is that very common? Um what we've learned through some of the research is that high blood pressure, particularly if you have high blood pressure for a long time and it's not treated, can lead to what we call vascular cognitive impairment, which is a, a, a mild form of dementia. That can be prevented um, by managing high blood pressure. Um, so it the risk factors for stroke um, can lead to um, cognitive impairment. And that's, that's pretty important. And one more question. If you have a stroke, do you have to see a specialist? Is it, is it your general doctor? Is it some, are there like these stroke doctors out there that people should see? Who do they, who do they go see for their care? So it, it may depend. Um, Oftentimes, when someone's had a stroke, they will be cared for by the stroke team. They will be cared for by the rehabilitation specialist. And then when they return home, um, they may see the neurologist um, a couple of times and then less frequently, but then they pick up their care with their primary care provider for the ongoing management of the risk factors. Dr. George, thank you so much for joining us. Up next, we're going to have more on the subject of podcasts for caregivers that are a result of your questions on topics about health, caring for elderly parents, and caring for yourselves. Helpful information for caregivers is on my website, PamelaDWilson.com. This is Pamela D. Wilson, your host. You're listening to The Caring Generation live on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. 
To learn more about Patricia Daily Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences, immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. You're listening to the Caring Generation radio program for caregivers and aging adults coming to you live from the BBM Global Network Channel 100 and tune in radio. The Caring Generation is the place for tips about health and well-being. All of these live shows become podcasts for caregivers on my website at PamelaDWilson.com and on your favorite podcast apps, including Apple, Google, Spreaker, and others. Let's talk more about caregiving programs to answer the question of how to deal with stubborn aging parents. You can check out my caregiving radio program and podcast called My Parent is Stubborn. This podcast for caregivers features an interview with Dr. Allison Hyde, who completed research on the relationships between adult children caregivers and elderly parents. This interview sheds light on why caregiving relationships can feel like a battle and gives tips on how to communicate with stubborn elderly parents. The next in favorite caregiving programs and podcasts for caregivers is a caregiver radio program called What is Making You Sick? You might be amazed to know that many family caregivers who help elderly parents, grandparents, aunts or uncles, don't view themselves as being a caregiver. They see themselves as more of a helper, which means that they don't realize that caregiving programs like the Caring Generation exist. Can you imagine that? Many helpers and caregivers experience physical and emotional stress from the role and responsibilities of being a caregiver. My guest for the caregiving radio program called What's Making You Sick is Dr. Robert Kellum. He is a board-licensed naturopathic physician, practitioner of classical Chinese medicine, and is a licensed body worker. When you listen to this and other caregiving programs, you'll see how the physical body, the energy body, our mind, and our soul interact with each other emotionally and physically to produce health or sickness. Dr. Kellum shares his story as a caregiver for his mother and stories of caregivers he treats in his practice who became sick because of dedication to the care of family members. All valuable lessons for our caregiving journey. Next in the favorite list of caregiving programs is the emotional roller coaster. This podcast for caregivers talks about the daily ups and downs that caregivers experience because of unexpected caregiving situations with elderly parents. My interview with elder law attorney Michael Hackard is about elder financial abuse that happens within families and elderly are who are abused by helpful people who even include police officers. You can receive a free copy of Michael's book. It's called The Wolf at the Door to help you identify and avoid financial abuse that happens within families by letting him know you heard about his interview on the Caring Generation radio show. You can send Michael Hackard an email. His email address is Hackard, H-A-C-K-A-R-D, at HackardLaw.com, and ask for a copy of his book, The Wolf at the Door. If you have a family member who has high blood pressure or any type of heart disease, my interview with Dr. Melissa Walton-Shirley on these caregiving programs called 
It takes more than love to keep your heart healthy. Shares information about managing heart disease that most people don't know. During this podcast for caregivers, I share information that answers the question, why caregiving takes more than love. Some of us know that. Many dedicated caregivers tell me that they love their husband, wife, mom, or dad, but they are emotionally and physically exhausted by being a caregiver. I understand. I work directly with family caregivers, elderly adults, and disabled adults for more than 20 years. If caregiving involved only caring for a loved one, might be easier. But we all know caregiving involves managing relationships with other family members, working with doctors and the healthcare system, pharmacies, insurance companies, and a long list of other people, which is why helpful caregiving programs are necessary. Being a caregiver is complicated. It's like having a part-time job or a second full-time job in addition to the job that you already have which leads me to talk about a couple of caregiving programs for working caregivers. The first of these podcasts for caregivers is called Managing Work, Life Balance, and Health. On this caregiving radio program, I share information from research about caregivers in the workplace. Nearly 80% of working caregivers admit that being a caregiver affects their work productivity. Yet, Most corporations don't recognize working caregivers or have caregiving programs for working caregivers. It's shocking. Advocating for working caregivers and talking to corporations about the importance of offering caregiving programs is a mission of mine. The program, Managing Work-Life Balance and Health, has an interview with Dr. Carrie Carvonen Gutierrez, who shares information about women's health issues that arise in middle age that result in physical disability. And in this term, physical disability is, I could do this six months ago, I can't do it today. It's not the traditional disability. Women who are caregivers are more likely to develop chronic diseases, including heart disease and experience depression, because let's face it, 60% of caregivers are still women. Caregiving is viewed as women's work. Another caregiving radio program for working caregivers is called When Work and Being a Caregiver Collide. These caregiving programs focus on women caregivers. You'll hear statistics from Women and Financial Wellness, a Merrill Lynch report. Women caregivers are unaware and very naive about the long-term financial effects of taking time off work to raise children and care for elderly parents and a spouse, which means that many women are shocked when they retire about not having enough money saved or what they do and how they survive when a husband passes away. On that caregiving radio program is an interview with Michael Collins, who talks about the legal aspects of probate, the wills of elderly parents, and the complications that arise in settling estates. We are also going to have a program. It is called Why is Being a Caregiver So Exhausting? That has an interview with Rita Chula of the AARP Public Policy Institute, research that confirms that caregivers are continuing to do more and more for elderly parents and family members, which again takes me back to the question, why aren't corporations doing more to support working caregivers? Share the Caring Generation radio show, podcast for caregivers, and all of the caregiving programs on my website with your elderly parents, your spouses, and everybody that you know. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker on the Caring Generation, live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. 
Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. This is The Caring Generation coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. We're back talking about podcasts for caregivers that answer the questions you and other caregivers ask. Let's talk about memory loss, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and other types of cognitive disorders. If you think a loved one has memory loss or dementia, but you're not quite sure... The caregiving program will help you identify normal memory loss from memory loss that might be a more significant issue. It is called the Signs of Dementia Checklist. On that show, I share common signs of memory loss based on my one-to-one work with the elderly as a court-appointed guardian and power of attorney. An interview with Dr. Jonathan Graf Radford, a neurologist from the Mayo Clinic, he talks about risk factors for dementia And the importance of being proactive, not waiting to get a diagnosis, not waiting to plan. A perfect match for this program about memory loss in my lineup of podcasts for caregivers is the caregiving program called How to Talk to a Parent with Dementia. Adult children caregivers for elderly parents express concerns that siblings don't know how to talk to mom or dad. Caregivers become frustrated with brothers and sisters who might be insensitive in their actions toward parents with dementia, and understandably so. Some brothers and sisters refuse to admit that mom or dad isn't the same mom or dad. These brothers or sisters want mom and dad to take an interest in them or to still be the parent. How to talk to a parent with dementia helps family members understand the changes in parents with dementia and how to create positive relationships that focuses on the needs of the parent with dementia, not adult children who drag their heels because they refuse to learn about how to talk to parents with dementia or Alzheimer's. Being a caregiver for a parent with dementia takes a special person with unlimited patience, empathy, and compassion. Dr. Stephen Post on this program shares tips for caregivers of parents with dementia and Alzheimer's. Since many parents have health issues that require interactions with the healthcare system, we can talk about podcasts for caregivers that focus on working with the healthcare system. The first caregiving program is called Is Healthcare for Getting the Elderly? On this program, Dr. Mary Wyman from the University of Wisconsin shares situations where bias from the healthcare system prevents the elderly from getting the care that they need, including doctors who don't refer the elderly for certain types of treatment that would be beneficial. This bias can extend to family caregivers who lose patience with mom or dad's health concerns or who buy into the idea of, well, this is just what happens with old people. My belief is that being old and sick is optional if we learn about how to be proactive with health like Dr. George shared with us. I've had my own issues with doctors who refuse to treat my elderly clients or other doctors who disagreed with the treatments that my clients wanted simply because my clients were old. 
As adult children, caregivers, and spouses, you can't let this happen. You have to learn to advocate and not take no for an answer. Your elderly parents and spouses depend on you to speak up for them. Being an advocate for elderly loved ones leads to the caregiving program called Why is Patient Education and Engagement So Important? This is another favorite podcast for caregivers that is so important. On this program is an interview with Dr. Mayor Davidson, who talks about diabetes prevention and management. As we've learned from the coronavirus, people with chronic conditions, including diabetes, are more susceptible to the coronavirus and other illnesses. Many consumers don't even realize that they have diabetes because they don't attend regular doctor appointments. My mission in providing caregiving programs and podcasts for caregivers is to increase knowledge about health and the risks of chronic disease so that fewer people become sick, so that fewer people suffer from poor health and are diagnosed with chronic disease, and if our elderly parents have a chronic disease, we know what to do. Because of my work doing this for more than 20 years, I've seen how poor health affects daily lives, and I know that a lot of this can be prevented when we become aware of the consequences of not taking care of health. My mom died at the young age of 69 because she didn't know how her daily habits resulted in severe life-altering health changes. Watching her become sick and die is one reason that I am inspired to create this variety of caregiving programs. This radio program and podcast for caregivers, my Caring for Aging Parents blog, my caregiving library, caregiving TV on the Roku channel, I stay busy. On all of these, I share specific steps that caregivers and aging adults can take that are on the program, Why is Patient Education and Engagement So Important? Following up on this subject is the caregiving radio program called I Am So Tired of Being a Caregiver. This caregiving program is another one of my favorites. It features Dr. Brooks Cash from the University of Texas Health Science Center, who talks about smoking and digestive issues. This caregiving radio program talks about the gap between health issues caused by smoking and what consumers know about how smoking or don't know about how smoking relates to stomach problems, GERD, indigestion, hiatal hernias, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, and other diseases. My mom was a smoker. She suffered from many of these stomach problems, and we had no idea that smoking was the cause. Back then, doctors didn't give us that information. We didn't know any better. If you know anyone who smokes, this is one of the top podcasts for caregivers that does offer surprising information about the effects of smoking from Dr. Brooks Cash based on his extensive medical career and research. I am so grateful to all of the experts who support these live shows and informative and educational podcasts for caregivers. We all need to know about health and how we can be proactive because all of this relates to being a caregiver for aging parents. I learned something new from every one of these guests. Please do share the podcast for caregivers by listening on your favorite podcast app, Google, Apple, Spreaker, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio. There are so many. Install an app on the cell phone of your family members, of your elderly parents. Make it easy for them to listen and to access all of this information. You can also put a link on the computer of an elderly family member to my website, PamelaDWilson.com, and the Caring Generation radio show page. Together, we can make that elderly make sure that elderly parents get the care that they need. After this break, more podcasts for caregivers about improving family caregiving relationships. I'm Pamela D. Wilson, your host. This is the Caring Generation live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back. To it's all about you with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's all about you with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current concerns 
concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. This is the Caring Generation radio program for caregivers and aging adults live on the BBM Global Network Channel 100 and tune in radio. Visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com, for podcasts of all of the Caring Generation radio programs for caregivers and aging adults. We're back to talk about podcasts for caregivers that focus on improving family relationships. Let's begin with the caregiving program, How to Manage When Families Don't Get Along. In my experience, no family is perfect, and that includes my family. I met with many family caregivers who were embarrassed to tell me that their family didn't get along. These meetings were held in my office, and this aspect is so common when you have children and parents who have been independent for so many years, who are now thrown into, what I say, a blender, and expected to come out shaken, stirred, and perfect. (laughs) It doesn't always work out that way. This caregiving radio program offers tips for how to improve dysfunctional and difficult relationships with brothers, sisters, and elderly parents. My guest on that program is attorney Spencer Corona. He shares stories of families who don't get along and why they end up in nasty court battles. As a court-appointed guardian, I testified in court many times on behalf of my clients at contested court hearings where families disagreed knock down drag out fights about the care of elderly parents. These are very difficult and highly stressful situations. Another favorite in the list of podcasts for caregivers is a caregiving program called My Mom is Crazy. An interview with Dr. Erlene Rosowski from William James College provides rare insights into relationships between adult children caregivers and elderly parents who have undiagnosed personality disorders. Dr. Rosowski shares a very heartwarming story of an adult child caregiver who is struggling to respond positively to her mother's behaviors. She offers some great suggestions. On that caregiving program, I share 10 tips for managing emotional triggers that set off our emotions and distract our attention from work and life. As caregivers, we know how 
easy it is to let that single phone call from an elderly parent or an argument within the family take our entire day off track. It's as if we can't take our mind away from caregiving situations that are upsetting. That program does share tips on how to manage emotional responses to upsetting situations so that they don't derail your entire day. Another caregiving radio program about family relationships is siblings won't help with elderly parents. What do we do with brothers and sisters who have every excuse in the world for why they can't help mom or dad, why they can't visit, why their lives are more important than our life who is the primary caregiver? On podcasts for caregivers, I share tips for having conversations with elderly parents who unintentionally enable adult children not to take responsibility and to help the primary caregiver talk to brothers and sisters to gain their participation in caring for elderly parents. In the coming weeks and months, we have more great topics by request of listeners of these podcasts and caregivers that I meet through my work and my social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Please do share the Caring Generation radio program and podcasts for caregivers with everybody that you know. Next week, we'll be talking about taking care of elderly parents at home. Thank you all for being proactive and interested in caregiving, aging, and health. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. You're listening to the Caring Generation radio program for caregivers and aging adults coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100 and TuneIn Radio. God bless you. Sleep well tonight. Have a fabulous day tomorrow and a great week until we are together again. Tune in each week for the Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson. Come join the conversation and see how Pamela can provide solutions and peace of mind for everyone. Here on Pamela D. Wilson's The Caring Generation.